Hello, this is Just Another 80s Geek, and you are watching The Geek Showcase, where we break down, highlight, and celebrate all things geeky. We're coming at you with a brand new series of episodes that's going to start today, and it's going to be released intermittently throughout the next few weeks, months, or year, however long it takes. But what we're going to be doing is we're going to be turning our geek attention to the world of Star Trek. That's right, the Star Trek universe. And the way we're going to be doing this is we're going to be looking back at each individual series, and we're going to be giving you our ranking of the Star Trek characters worst to best in each of the series. And then at the end, we're going to do an overall list of some sorts to be determined. So we're going to start off and make sense. Let's start at the beginning. Let's start with the OG, the original series, a lot of times listed as Star Trek TOS or the original series. This consists of a lot of the classic characters from that 1960s, 1970s version. And just to kind of do some housekeeping, guys, we're only counting main cast members or recurring roles that were um, a position of the crew. We're not ranking villains. We're not ranking people they may have come in contact with at other worlds, aliens, things of that nature. These are people that had to have held a position on the ship. So... That kind of gives you a little bit of ground rules as far as who can and cannot be included. So we have decided that there was nine crew members that appeared in enough episodes to be included in this. So we're going to start at nine. We're going to work our way up to number one. Starting nine, we're going to go with Yeoman Janice Rand, played by Grace Lee Whitney. Uh, Grace Lee Whitney sadly passed away in 2015 at the age of 85, but she played Yeoman Janice Rand, who was the... Yeoman for Captain James T. Kirk in that series. She didn't have a, a whole lot of screen time compared to some of the other folks that you're going to see us mention here in this episode, but she was definitely interesting, iconic look there with her hairdo, the blonde, bleach blonde, like beehive of, of a hairdo, so that was interesting. She first appeared in the episode The Man Trap, and she had significant episodes in The Enemy Within, Charlie X... Miri, but uh, this is a somewhat of a side character. That there were going to be more appearances of her, but they kind of wrote her off because they felt like the Captain Kirk character was too closed in if he had a significant love interest. So they wanted to get her out of there so that Captain Kirk could be more of the single eligible bachelor bouncing around from woman to woman like he didn't do that enough anyways. So you do see in the later parts of the series where there's a variety of other different yeoman characters that come in and, and play various roles in that as she's kind of written off basically halfway, I think it was halfway through the first season or something of that nature. Um, I am going to be doing a thing here as we get to each character. If they've been notably listed on any type of geek list out there, we're going to go ahead and highlight that. So for Yeoman Rand, Sci-Fi in 2015 ranked her as the top in the top 21 most interesting supporting characters of Star Trek. And she was listed in 2019 as one of the most underrated characters of Star Trek Universe by CBS. So Yeoman Rand starts off our countdown here at number 9. Let's see who comes in at number 8. We're going to keep the female vibe going here with our number 8, and we're going to go with a character played by the illustrious in the Star Trek franchise actress of Majel Barrett, and that is, and I, uh, I apologize if I pronounce any of these names wrong, and we're going with Nurse Christine Chapel, who... Trivia wise, was originally supposed to be number one on the series, the second in command basically for the pilot, and they did not like that. She did obviously have a relationship with Gene Roddenberry. They were married, I believe, at one point, or else they just had a relationship, but that was it was pretty known there. And the executives did not like her character, so they wanted her written off, so she came back as Nurse Christine Chapel, which a lot of people had a problem with. A lot of the stereotypical roles that a female would have and things around that nature. But Christine Chapel, and more importantly, Barrett, would go on to have a lot more legs in the Star Trek franchise. Barrett goes on to play Luxana, Lux, Luxana Troy in Star Trek The Next Generation, as well as being the voice of the Enterprise computer 
for almost every series that's ever been made um, through her lifetime. I mean, she did pass away in 2008 at the age of 76, so she obviously hasn't done the voice since then, but they have used her voice in so many of the series. Nurse Chapel also, in 2016, was ranked as the 60th most important character of Starfleet within the Star Trek science fiction universe by Wired Magazine out of 100 characters. So that's where she got some notoriety there. Uh, we're going to put her here at number 8 as far as the original series crew. Let's go on to number 7. For number 7, we're going to go with Pavel Chekhov, played by Walter Koenig. He is currently 87 years old, an actual surviving member of the cast here. And Chekhov was interesting. He kind of came around because they wanted him to... They wanted some younger cast and crew members of Star Trek, the original series. They felt like a lot of the other actors were and characters were portraying to a little bit of a more of a middle-aged demographic so they wanted somebody younger they wanted somebody that kind of had that look of like the Beatles or the monkeys at the time and Walter definitely kind of pulled that off so that's why we have this younger looking Chekhov even though in reality he's almost the same age as a bunch of the other actors here he just had that more of a baby face more of that younger look boyish face look um, so that's kind of what helped him get that role obviously he would be portrayed in later films by Anton Yelchin and things of that nature while he was alive, but uh, Chekhov was just a great character. He played the role of the navigator in the original crew, and Chekhov comes in here at number seven. That takes us to number six. We're going to go back to the female power here with Nichelle Nichols as Nyota Uhura, Uhura, the comm officer for the original series. Uhura also has a lot of fame being one of the main female voices of this character you know you had Janice Rand and Christine Chapel, but they're more kind of side characters recurring characters Uhura is definitely one of the main characters here so there's a lot that uh, kind of came along with that also obviously African-American um, so she was breaking the mold there and obviously the interracial kiss was a big deal there with Captain Kirk uh, in the 1968 episode Plato's Stepchildren Uhura also has a singing background uh, well, as well as some other things and she was just a, a groundbreaking character at the time and she died in she actually just passed away 2022 at the age of 89 unfortunately but she is just a iconic character within the Star Trek universe so she's going to be in a lot of rankings here so in 2013 she was ranked among the top 50 sexiest characters of the science fiction genre in 2016, Screen Rant rated Uhura as the 16th best character in Star Trek overall, as presented in television and film up to that time, highlighting the character as a lingual expert who could handle herself on away missions. In 2018, Comic Book Resources ranked Uhura as the 23rd best Starfleet character of Star Trek. In 2018, The Rap placed Uhura as 20th out of 39 in a ranking of main cast characters of the Star Trek franchise. In 2016, she was ranked as 14th most important character of Starfleet by Wired Magazine. In 2017, Screen Rant ranked Uhura the second most attractive person in Star Trek Universe. We'll get to who the first one was in a later episode. In 2017, Comic Book Resources ranked the performance of Mirror Uhura the 14th fiercest female character of the Star Trek Universe. They also, in 2018, ranked Uhura as the 23rd best member of Starfleet, and in 2019, Sci-Fi ranked her as the 5th sexiest Star Trek character. So a lot of rankings and a lot of uh, positive reception for Uhura in the Star Trek franchise, but for the original series crew, I'm putting her here at number 6. That brings us to number 5. Some people probably would have Uhura higher than my five and four, possibly. But for my number five, I'm going to go with the iconic George Takei in his role as Hikaru Sulu. George is 86 years old. He obviously went on to play this role in Voyager, Lower Decks. He did some voice work in some of the animated versions as well. He's also done a lot of voice work just in general. But Sulu, as our next character, number five here, I just think that... Perhaps it's just because of the fame that Takai has garnered since, but I still think Sulu played an interesting role here as this Asian character in the original Star Trek series, but not... 
he didn't really fit into the Asian stereotypes of characters that were kind of being played a lot of times in the 60s, 70s, and even in the 80s. So I thought it was interesting that he kind of had a little bit of a different take on that, and I thought it was well-deserved, and I thought it did a lot to kind of break the mold. So I think he was a, a very important character when it came to that. He obviously has been reserved very positively. Um, he wasn't just the prototypical bad guy like he played in a lot of other films and TV series. So I thought he just he didn't come across as that mute or expressionless or unemotional typical Asian character that we got in those days. So I like that. So that's why I'm ranking him as high as I am here. I just think he's pretty memorable here. In 2017, Screen Rank... Screen Rant ranked Sulu as the 15th most attractive person in the Star Trek universe. In 2018, CBR ranked Sulu the 17th best Starfleet character. 2018, The Rap had him 19 of 39 as main cast characters. 2016, he was ranked as the 18th most important character of Starfleet by Wired Magazine. And in 2019, Sci-Fi had him as the 9th sexiest Star Trek character. I don't know about that, really. I'm not a good judge of that, but perhaps I would have a lot of other people as sexier characters than Sulu. But you can't argue his importance, so that's why Sulu comes in here at number five. That takes us to number four, probably, again, another controversial choice. A lot of people would probably have him lower than possibly Sulu or Uhura. But I'm going with James Duhans, James Duhans Montgomery Scott here at number four. Unfortunately, Duan passed away in 2005 at the age of 85. He did appear in a Next Generation episode, and this, of course, is the chief engineer of the crew. So Montgomery Scott here at our number four spot. I just think Scotty has such memorable moments. If you go back and watch the series, maybe he doesn't come across as one of the most important people in that crew but when you look back at everything that has happened with star trek over the years and every and just in pop culture like scotty has the beam me up scotty and i'm giving it all she got captain and all those types of things are just have become so iconic as far as his portrayal of this so i just think it's it's fantastic he's appeared in 10 films obviously he appeared in the next generation episode relics he um, obviously did the voice in the animated Star Trek series. He's done a lot of stuff in that world. And I just think he's such a great character within that world. And his appearance in Next Generation is still one of my favorites. It's just kind of that looking back on the nostalgia, looking back on your past, dealing with that, dealing if you still have a purpose. I think that is a great episode. If you have not seen Relics from Star Trek The Next Generation, please go back and watch that, and you will understand why Montgomery Scott, or Scotty, is so high on my list. As far as some of the rankings go from other publications, 2009 IGN rated Scotty the 16th best character. 2016 Screen Rant rated Scotty as the 18th best character overall. In 2016, also, Scotty was ranked as the 19th most important character by Wired Magazine. The Rat placed Scotty as 12 out of 39 as far as main cast characters in 2018. In the same year, CBR ranked Scotty the 9th best Starfleet character. And in 2019, Screen Rant, Rant ranked Scotty the 5th smartest character of all Star Trek. So that is Montgomery Scott. He is our number four on our crew of the original series. That leaves us with three left. It should be obvious who those three are, but what order are they going to come in? All right, number three, we're going to go with Bones. Dr. Leonard McCoy, played by DeForest Kelly, who unfortunately passed away in 1999. He was the first of the main cast to pass away at the age of 79. He also did appear in an episode of The Next Generation. Obviously, he is the chief medical officer of the original crew of Star Trek, the of the original crew there on the Enterprise. So Leonard McCoy, Bones, it doesn't get... I mean, it was basically a three-ring circus there at the, at the top of the crew here for the original series. And I think it makes perfect sense for Bones to come in here at number three. I'm not a, I'm a doctor, not a whatever. Obviously, he has some iconic lines, too. He delivered 11 times. He said, I'm a doctor, Jim, not a whatever. And fill in the blank type thing. So it's just a, a great line there from that. And he just had this great, he brought this great chemistry, this great dynamic between himself and Kirk. And especially when he would play off of 
Spock because Bones and Spock are so different as far as the logic versus the science and the feel, you know, the emotional stuff that came along with the portrayal by DeForest Kelly. So you see a lot of times Spock and, and Bones playing off of each other and Kirk being kind of in the middle. And it's it's just a great dynamic. It brought so much to the series. Uh, Carl Urban plays McCoy in the 2009 film. But in this original series, I just think it's it's... This one I, I feel more comfortable than ever. You can argue who's 4, 5, and 6 and what their order are. And you can probably argue between 1 and 2. I don't think there's an argument for who's number 3. I think DeForest Kelly's portrayal of Leonard McCoy is solidified in cement, permanent. He has to be the number 3 ranked character in this crew. So I just think that goes without saying. I'm more confident in this placement than any of the other people in this crew. 2012 IGN ranked the character Dr. McCoy as depicted in the original series, films, etc. as the fifth top character of the Star Trek universe. In 2016, McCoy was ranked as the fifth most important character of Starfleet by Wired. In 2016, Sci-Fi ranked McCoy third of the six-man cast Space Doctors of the Star Trek franchise. 2017 Screen Rant, Rant ranked McCoy, played by Urban, as the 17th most attractive person in the Star Trek universe. And in 2018, The Rat plays Dr. McCoy as 6 out of 39 as the main characters. And then finally, same year, CBR ranked McCoy as the 11th best Starfleet character of Star Trek. Interesting thing that we might do, we might have to compare all of the different positions and the doctors or the captains or the things of that nature. But Dr. Leonard McCoy here comes in at number 3 for the ranking of the original cast. That leaves us only with two spots, and this is where I'll probably catch a lot of flack because I'm not going to rank it the way people want me to. That's right, number two, William Shatner's James T. Kirk. He's 92 years old. Obviously, he is most known for his role as, as Captain Kirk, but he also had a main role in T.J. Hooker. He had a main role as kind of the narrator in Rescue 911. He was a main character in Boston Legal. He's a WWE Hall of Famer, for God's sakes. How do I not have this guy at number one? Well, just for me personally, when I'm ranking the characters of the original series, James T. Kirk is great. He's iconic. But I just like another character a little better as far as finding the other character more interesting. So that's why I've done it the way I've done it. But there's no taking away from James T. Kirk. He's the OG, the original captain, basically, if you don't count Pike and all the other stuff that kind of whatever. Um, but James Tiberius Kirk, I mean, what a name, too. He is just so well known. William Shatner is not a good actor in any stretch of the imagination, in my opinion, but he is definitely iconic with the way he portrays it. The pauses has been, you know, he's been the subject of so many jokes and so many different depictions in comedy or in you know animated comedies and things like that like everybody does his cadence and things like that so he's just been emulated or not necessarily it, it, he hasn't been mocked he's just he's been paid homage to or i guess made fun of in a way in so many different things for his the way that he portrays it but i just think he is such a an iconic character that he has to be in the top two here it's just which one do you put first which one do you put second in 2012 ign ranked the character as the number one top character of the star trek universe in 2016, he was ranked number one most important character of Starfleet within the Star Trek science fiction universe by Wired. Out of 100 characters, he was number one there. 2018, CBR ranked Kirk the best Starfleet character of Star Trek. 2019, Screen Rank rant ranked kirk the eighth smartest character of star trek so a lot of people not just putting him as number one in this crew but number one overall in the whole franchise i can't do it i'm sorry guys his portrayal as a character was very male chauvinist womanizer things of that nature so he had that going against him and i just don't think he's quite as interesting as some of these other characters guys i'm sorry i know he's probably the most iconic the most well known but for me He's not the best character in the original series. He's number two. So that leaves, obviously, number one as Leonard Nimoy's portrayal of Spock. Leonard Nimoy passed away in 2015 at the age of 83. He did appear as Spock in The Next Generation, the 2009 films, and obviously all of the original films. I just think Spock, who is the first officer, the science officer of the original crew, is the best character of that cast. He just brings so much to the show, so much to the role, and I just can't go another way. I, it's, it's between him and Kirk, and I just lean towards Spock. I just think he's he's more interesting. Like, 
more people know like the live long and prosper the hand signal more people I, I just think he's just so recognizable in this role and it's just lived on further than captain kirk has in more ways than one he's just he's come up in a lot of different stuff because of how interesting his character is as a vulcan as you know not a human he's the first you know main vulcan character that we get and i think his play off of james t kirk his play off of leonard mccoy just makes this series and makes this crew work without him I just don't think you can have as good of a crew. You could say the same thing probably about a lot of these other ones, including Kirk, but I just think Spock is the more interesting character and the character that I like a little bit more. I like him more than any character that appears in the original series, obviously, which is why I put him in the number one spot. So argue as much as you'd like. I'm sticking to it. Spock is the best character of the original series. Let's see where he ranked amongst some other stuff. In 2004, he ranked number 21 in Bravo's list of the 100 greatest TV characters. That's just not Star Trek, guys. That's 100 greatest TV characters. He was 21. In 2008, UGO named Spock one of the 50 greatest TV characters. Again, TV characters. In 2012, IGN ranked the character Spock as depicted in the original series as the second top character of the Star Trek universe to Kirk, obviously. In 2017, Screen Rant, Screen Rant ranked Spock the fifth most attractive person in the Star Trek universe. I don't know about that, but that's okay. In 2018, they ranked Spock as one of the top eight most powerful characters. And in 2018, Bar ranked Spock the sixth best Starfleet character of the Star Trek franchise. So a lot of other things that you can probably find about Spock out there. There's been a lot written about him. There's been a lot done about him, television-wise, movie-wise, etc. And he is... For me, the number one character of the original series. We'll have to wait and see towards the end of this series of episodes if he ranks number one overall of all Star Trek or if he's simply the best of the original crew. We'll also have to see how he handles himself amongst the first officers or the science officers and see where he ranks there. But that does it for this episode of the Geek Showcase. Once again, the ranking was from 9 to 1. We had Yeoman Janice Rand at 9, Nurse Christine Chapel at 8, Pavel Chekhov at 7, Nyota Uhura at 6, Hikaru Sulu at 5, Montgomery Scott 4, Leonard McCoy 3, James T. Kirk number 2, and Spock number 1. So tune in for more episodes of the Geek Showcase where we go through all of the other crews. Who's the best of Discovery? Who's the best of the next generation? Who's the best of Deep Space Nine? If you want to hear a controversial one, wait till Deep Space Nine because I do not agree with most people on that. Who's the best in Voyager? Maybe a little bit more controversy there, too. Enterprise. We're going to do them all, guys. So tune in for more episodes of that as we make our way through that in the Geek Showcase. We might spatter some other episodes in between some of those, but that's what we're going to be doing here when we look at the world of Star Trek. This has been Just Another 80s Geek. Tune in next time. <laughs>